Yeah, danger is my assignment. I get sent to a lot of places I can't even pronounce. They all spell the same thing, though, trouble. But this time I get a real surprise. Instead of getting sent to one of those faraway places, here I am in Washington, D.C., in a confidential file room of my own home office, waiting around at midnight for a fellow agent to show up and tell me what the deal is all about. Hi, George. Steve. Why all the cloak and dagger stuff? Having me meet you here in the confidential file office at midnight? I wanted to talk to you. Yeah, but do you have to wait until the witches are riding their broomsticks all over the joint? Oh, I think there's a witch mixed up in this, Steve, but uh, she happens to be very blonde and very pretty. One of our clerks? Yeah. For some months now, confidential and secret documents from this room have been finding their way into unfriendly hands. How? Oh, probably microfilm, but uh, that's what you're to find out. Uh-oh. -uh. Who's she passing this film on to? Well, I don't know, but we're pretty sure it's someone who's also working in the same building. I get it. So we bait a trap. I've got a pretty good idea who's going to be the cheese. <laughs> That's right, Steve. Oh, great. What do I do? Well, in about an hour, this girl's coming into the building on a special pass. Let her get started, and then you come in here uh, casual-like. Keep her here until whoever's working with her gets impatient and shows up. Well, you better hurry and change your clothes. Change my clothes? Yeah. And get into these. You're uh, a guard replacing McNulty. Hmm. I suppose when the missing link shows up, I'm write my own ticket, huh? That's right. Just be sure, Steve, when you write it, it isn't a one-way ticket. Yeah. Good evening, ma'am. Oh, you scared the daylights out of me. You must have a guilty conscience. <laughs> no, it's just that well, I wasn't expecting anyone. Well, life is full of surprises. <laughs> Working late tonight, huh? Uh-huh. That's what happens when you're a wage slave for Uncle Sam. All confidential and secret papers must be in the confidential and secret file before the file clerk leaves the building. <laughs> well, you shouldn't object to that. After all, it's in the interest of national security, isn't it? You're new here. I thought Officer McNulty was the regular guard on this floor. Oh, I'm just taking his place tonight. He'll be back tomorrow. What's the matter? You look disappointed. <laughs> disappointed? What difference does it make to me? It's only that he often goes out for coffee for me when I have to work late. I wonder, would you get some for me? I'll do better than that. I'll wait till you get through work. We'll go together. <sighs> Officer, have you checked the personnel department on the second floor? You know, they often leave that door unlocked. Okay, I'll check it when we go out together. Well, it really isn't necessary for you to... Betty. Steve Mitchell. Just a minute. You all right, Steve? Yeah, hi, George. Well, there's your missing link. Yeah, looks like an old friend. Yeah, Joe Mavani. He recognized me and started shooting. How'd he ever get a security badge? I don't know, but if you check, I'll bet you find it's forged. Yeah, I hadn't counted on you having to do this. Well, we better notify the authorities. Then we'll ask this young lady a few questions. You're wasting your time. I'm standing on my constitutional rights. Uh, you too? <laughs> ah. hmm. Now we get that coffee. Well, that's the crop, Steve. Cuban passport, a ticket to Havana, and a card. What's the name on that card again? 
Manuel Yorta, 27 Avenue de Ruiz. Well, that's something to go on. Maybe you ought to send Ferguson down there. He speaks Spanish like a native. Ferguson's in Calcutta. Well, it's kind of late. Guess I'll get some sack time. It's mighty good idea, Steve. We can both use some. What's the idea of that? Well, you said you wanted some sleep. So you tear his picture out of his passport. That should put me to sleep? Of course. We substitute your picture and you can sleep all the way to Havana, Mr. Mavani. Mr. Mavani, wait a minute. Maybe this guy's got some friends in Havana that might recognize me, too. Yeah. Well, if he does, call me the minute you find out. So here I am on my way to Cuba under the name of Joe Mavani, a two-bit Benedict Arnold. The big question is, do I find the head man Yorta who's been buying secret government documents, or is Havana my last assignment, and do I wind up a suntanned corpse? As I turn to leave, I spot a little gent pushing a banana cart and giving out with a singing commercial. Buy bananas, buy bananas from Jose. Buy bananas, buy bananas. Hey, look, Pagliacci, you know who lives in that house? Please, senor, do not bother with that house. It's much safer if you stay out here and eat bananas. Look, I didn't come here to... Oh, I get it. Okay, how much? Five pesos. Five pesos? It's the large economy size. Okay, that's a deal. Bless. Now, about that house, who lives there? Please, senor, nobody lives in that house. <laughs> I pay five pesos for this lousy banana to find that out? At least the banana will not kill you. Senor, why you do not leave? Como se dice, uh, take it on the scram. Now, I got business here. In that case, I have something that may interest the senor. You have? Let's see. <laughs> Look, bud, you're in a rut. Now, just run along, will you? Please, senor, it is I who give the orders here. Your passport. What's the matter? Things a little rough in the banana business? I'm interested to know just who you are. Well, take a look at the passport. It's all there. So you are Joe Mivani. Welcome to Havana. Yeah. You will conduct your business with me. You will deliver to me the photograph. I will pay you the $1,000. $10,000. $10,000, but... $10,000, that's the price. Take it or leave it. Muy bien. I will deliver your message. Okay, you can contact me at the Hotel International, room 512. Uh-uh. We take no chances walking into the trap. You will meet me here at 8 o'clock tonight. Okay. Tell your boss if he wants the film to be sure and bring the money. I told you I'll do business with no one but him. But why? Senor, I've been thinking. Those tiny photographs of yours, they're very valuable to certain people. If Yorta will pay 10,000, perhaps somebody else will pay 20,000, maybe even 30,000, perhaps even 40. What are you driving at? To be perfectly honest, uh, we can form a partnership. You'd be willing to double cross your boss? Please, Senor, the English language is so frank. Let us say I merely wish to eliminate him from the negotiations. Well? Now, partner, this is how we will work the deal. You have the microfilm. I know where Yorta is hiding. If we can get far enough away from here, we can divide the...
takes me all of one second to decide that he who fights and runs away lives. From here, I can't see the front door, but I'm not going to stick my neck out again. I wait a minute or two, and then I decide I might as well toss my hat in the ring. My hat doesn't collect any holes, so maybe I won't either, but I'm taking it slow and easy. The killer could still be around, and I've already seen some pretty convincing proof of his marksmanship. I edge carefully out from behind the bushes. Everything's quiet. Finally, I step out into the open. Then I get a king-size surprise. Not only is the killer not around, neither is the body. Well, this is just great. I'm reasonably sure I didn't just dream this whole deal, but right now it looks like I'd have a tough time convincing anyone else of that. Can I be of service to you, senor? Yeah. Did you see anybody come out of that house? Yes, senor. There he goes now. I'll give you 10 pesos if you can catch that car. Do not worry, senor. We'll catch him pronto. <laughs> the joke is on me. The engine, she's killed, dead. Shall I start it up again? Might be an idea if we're going to catch up with that guy. You Americanos always wear it for nothing. For nothing? For nothing? You said 10 pesos. No, skip it. We probably missed our fellow by now. Oh, no, senor, you're mistaken. I know where, just where is he going. You know where is he going? Right turn to Calle Primera. Left turn to Avina de la Paz. Two blocks to Calle Las Ondas, and then to the waterfront. How do you know? He gave me 10 pesos to take you to him. Buddy, what's your name? Alfredo. Alfredo? From here out, you carry the ball. Boy, this is a great place for a holdup. That can be arranged, senor. Hey, there must be a fire sale on those things. Everybody's got one. All right, Mavani. Hand over that microfilm. Duck. You're going to tell me two things or I'll slap you silly. Who's your order and where can I find him? Come on, open your mouth before I split it. No, don't hit me. Your order, he lives on the Islas de Mono. And he is the man who... Senor, senor, senor. Senor, now they are starting to shoot at me. Alfredo, where is the Isla del Mono? Isla del Mono, senor. Why you always want to go to places which are bait for you? Come, senor, I take you back to the hotel. No, wait a minute, little bodyguard. Look, I'm on a spot. The cops are on my tail. I can make explanations, but I haven't got time. Take me to the Isla del Mono. Oh, no, senor, while we don't take a scenic tour of night, I'm in Havana. Is that uh, one moment. Uh, one moment, senor. This cop cannot take you there. Isla del Mono is an island, a two-hour boat ride from here. Oh, great. Looks like I not only have to get killed on this job, but I'm going to get seasick. What do you say, senor? Uh, Alfredo, how good are you at rowing? Very bad, but I have a friend who has a fishing boat. We can borrow it, and I can drive a boat better than a taxi cab. It is in Pier 5. Alfredo, you're a real chum. Oh, oh after all, I have many connections here. I've been here in Havana all my life. Yeah. There they come. Look, we better split up. I'll see you at Pier 5. I put in a call to the Havana police. I tell them where I'm heading, that Yorta, although he doesn't know it, is holding open house and that they're invited too. Alfredo and I head straight for Isla del Mono. All is quiet, save for the chugging of the boat and the creaking sound of my neck being stuck out. Out there in the blackness is a tiny island which holds the answer to three questions. Who is Yorta? How does he work his racket? And if I find him, what does he do when he reaches for some stolen microfilm and finds out He's shaking hands with the long arm of the law. Alfredo spots the island, and I tell him to cut the engine so we can glide in unannounced. A few minutes later, we become 
two uninvited guests on Yorta's island. Alfredo, is this the only house on the island? This is Yorta's island, senor. The only house is. Why don't we walk up straight to the front door? Is your friend not expecting you? No and no. Why did you know? He's not expecting me, and he's not my friend. You come to spy on Yota, the most dangerous man in all Cuba? <laughs> well, brother, why didn't you blow a bugle? Now the whole island knows we're here. Yeah, sure brought out the welcoming committee. Look, hightail it back to the boat. Get on the ship to shore radio. Call the cops and tell them to hurry. I'll try and stay in one piece till you get back. We've been waiting for you, Mr. Mavani. Welcome to the house of Yorta. Is that the way you greet all your guests? Yorta left special instructions for your welcome, Mr. Mavani. What for? Haven't I had enough pushing around trying to deliver a little piece of microfilm? We don't like your methods. The price was $1,000. No sooner do you get to Havana than it goes up to ten grand. you are not very smart, Mavani. Now you not only end up broke, but dead. Pulling that trigger isn't going to get you the microfilm. Only sure way to get them delivered is on my terms. What terms? I hand them personally to Yorta. We don't work that way. I do. Mavani, you're stolen. That is because he's expecting me to bring the police. Alfredo. Not Alfredo. Yorta. You're Yorta? Yes, my driving should have convinced you I am not a cab driver. Then you killed that guy on the waterfront. You also killed Jose, the banana peddler. Yes, it has been a full day. Please do not make it necessary for me to kill you too. You made a bold statement about delivering the microfilm to Yorta personally. Now you have the chance to do so. Sorry. The price has gone up to 20,000. You're insulting our intelligence. Don't you think we know who you are? Who am I? You are Joe Mouvani, a small-time swindler. You have double-crossed many men in your day, even a woman. The government fire clock is in jail. You may have double-crossed her too. But I won't let you play any tricks on me. You see, this microfilm is much too important for me to lose. Why? It completes a set I have, a beautiful set of photographs of secret government file. You see, I'm a collector, Mivani, and I find my hobby a profitable one, and I intend to keep it so. Well? Well, I don't have it on me. It's a lie. 
You've been watched every minute since your plane landed in Havana. Your room and your luggage has been searched. You have it with you. Sorry, Yoda, this is one item you're not going to add to your collection. Don't mark his face. What a pity to take such a beating for a tiny piece of celluloid. Now, do you remember where you put it? All right, I'll tell you where it is. It's in the hands of the United States government where it belongs. I see we arrived just in time. Just about three ribs too late. We started as soon as you telephoned. Thank you, Captain. Kept my promise to you, too. There's your Mr. Yorda. This one, Mr. Mitchell? Mitchell? Steve Mitchell? Don't let him get to the boat. Don't worry, Mr. Mitchell. We also have men at the dock. There is no other way for him to leave the island. We will find him. Vaminos. I'll join you in a minute. Want to look around here a little. a chance coming back here, aren't you? This is the last place they would look for me. Pretty cagey. I have something here I want. I'll still believe you have got something I want. Get up, Buster. I've been waiting for this. What is that? That is his collection of microfilm, Captain. I'll keep this little one. The big one is all yours. Better go tell your boys to come and get them out of here. Scar the face, huh? <laughs> <laughs> 